Hello and welcome to Waverton Evangelical Fellowship. Welcome to WEF on the Web, our weekly YouTube service during lockdown. My name's Robin, I'm the pastor here, and it's great that you're able to join us. Whether it's Sunday, uh, whether it's some of the time during the week, whether you're on your own, whether you're with the rest of your family or the rest of your household watching this, uh, however and whenever, uh, it's great that you're able to join in with us uh, as we worship together. Uh, and just because we're all in different places and maybe watching this at different times, we are still united in that we're worshipping the one true God. Well, we've got our usual exciting mix uh, of elements this morning. We've got uh, some music, we've got Bible reading and prayers. I get a little bit of a rest, or, or you get a rest from me this morning, because we've got Paul McCabe talking to us from Galatians chapter 3. And of course, we've got the latest instalment of Sunday Club. I wonder what John's up to this morning. Well, I've seen a sneak preview, so I know. And no, I'm not going to tell you. That would spoil it. You're going to have to watch. So sit back, enjoy the service this morning. And I pray that as we watch and as we join in, we have a real sense of being connected with each other and connected with the God whom we worship. So let's start that worship with a song.
Oh, welcome to Sunday Club. Boys and girls, families, friends, it's really good to see you again. Now, today we're thinking about faith. But what is faith? That's a good question. What is faith? In the Bible, we can read in the book of Hebrews that faith is the things we hope for. Faith is the things we hope for and the things we cannot see. The things we hope for and the things we cannot see. We've got a game to start our Sunday Club together. This is Zoig. Meet Zoig. I'm the only one who understands him. Absolutely. Now the game challenge is this. The challenge is to see if we can get four of these table tennis balls into the two cups. Either the cups, so we can have four in one or three in one or one another. It doesn't matter. We've just got to try and get them in the cups from here. Now the good news is, yes, the good news is, sorry, that the balls are smaller than the top of the cups. You see that? Yep, yeah, that's the truth. So the balls will fit in like that. The other good news that's on our side for this challenge is that because we've got gravity helping us, when we uh, release the balls or throw them in, they actually drop down into the cups. Now you're probably thinking, it's quite straightforward. It is. But we've got things on our side to help us. We've got laws, we've got rules, which mean that the balls will go in the cups. Now, really, Zoic says the challenge is far too easy for us just to go, yes, it's quite easy, isn't it? So, to make it harder, Zoic suggests that we try to blindfold us, ourselves and to see if we can do it. So. Okay, we'll try this. Never work with uh, stuffed aliens. Sorry, stuffed friends. Um, particularly when you're live or you're on video. Well, here we are. So, this blindfold, I don't think this blindfold is really designed for your for alien sized heads, really. Hang on a minute. Okay, where's my other hand when you need it? Okay, we've got that. Right. Oh yeah, he says that I have to go uh, first, and then he's going to go second. Okay, so I'm going to try this. Okay, so hang on a minute. Hang on, glasses off first. Oh, dear. We can do this. We can do this. Come on, come on, Zoe. We can do this. Okay, blindfold on. <laughs> Zoe, I've only got one hand. I don't know where my other hand is. Well. I know where my other hand is. Right, okay. Blindfold on. Can you say anything? How many fingers? Three. Oh, okay, you must be blindfold. I can't see. I can't see a th thing. I know you're there. Right, yes, okay. Okay, right. So, I know we should be socially distancing, sorry, but we do live in the same household, don't we? Right, okay. So, pick up our table tennis balls. So, I'm going to give you two. There's one for you, Zoe. Whoa, steady on, hold them tight. Okay, and I've got one, and then we're going to have go two rounds. So, one each, and then we're going to go for a second round. Okay, you're going to go first, Zoe? You can't speak, you've got, <laughs> you've got a ball in your mouth. Okay, come on, Zoe, all right, we'll count you down. Three, two, one. Oh. Yeah, sounds like you failed. Okay, <laughs> so all right, you tried. Okay, well, it's hard when you can't see, isn't it? Things we're, we're hoping for this. Like the verse says, we're hoping for this. We can't see it, but we're hoping. That's faith. We've got faith for this. Okay, where am I go? No, no. Okay. Right, we've got a second set to go. Okay, second one, second set. Come on, we can do this. We can do this, Zoe. Ready? You can go first? Yeah, <laughs> he can't speak. I keep asking him and he's, he's silent. It's great. No, it is great. Okay, right. Ready, Zoe? You go first and I'll go second. Ready? Come on. Three, two, one. Oh, no, no, good effort, good effort. Yes, good effort, you, you tried hard. Okay, my go, okay, ready? Love to get this in, ready? Come on, let's hope. Three, two, one. Oh, that sounds like... Ha ha, got it in! <laughs> oh, dear me, that's amazing. And we've our first take as well. We didn't try this, no, we've not tried this before. Well, the thing is, the thing is, Jesus calls us children of God when we have faith in him. He calls us his children. We just need to trust him. Children, parents, families, 
Let's trust God for all the things we're hoping for. For our schools, for our hospitals, for our friends and our relatives, for this virus, for all the things that we're hoping for. That is, things have changed at the moment, we know. Let's pray. Let me pray for you. Yeah, shh, we're praying. Lord, thank you. Thank you for calling us your children. Help us to have faith for all the things we are hoping for. Amen. Amen. This thing is called, I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. I'm going to follow Jesus and do what's right. I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. Now it's lively, so stick with it. See if you can keep up. for this song and to be honest I don't feel prepared I need to go and do something just to get myself really in the mood in the groove for this song and you might want to do the same so I'm going to give you five seconds uh, to go away and when you come back maybe we'll all be in the mood to worship and praise this great amazing truth that we walk by faith and not by sight okay I'm going to count us down can you help me down from five five four Three, two, one, yay! Way! It's a cowboy song. It's a song where we stomp around and remind everyone that we are, remind God and remind ourselves that we are in fact walking by faith. We're living by faith and not by the things that we can see around us. So, Let's go for it. Whether you're dressed up as a cowboy or whether you're not, it doesn't matter. I know I wanted to. So, this song's called I'm Going to Walk by Faith and Not by Sight. I'm going to walk by faith, not by sight. I'm going to follow Jesus and do what's right. I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. So, let's have a go. I'm gonna walk by faith and not by sight I'm gonna follow Jesus and do what's right I'm gonna walk by faith and not by sight I'm gonna walk by faith and not by sight I'm gonna walk by faith and not by sight I'm gonna follow Jesus and do what's right I'm gonna walk by faith Jesus said, if you follow me, you will never live in darkness. Jesus said, if you follow me, you will live in the light. Jesus said, if you follow me, you will never live in darkness. Jesus said, if you follow me, you will live in darkness. and pray every day I'm gonna watch and pray every day I'm gonna do everything that I heard Jesus say I'm gonna watch and pray every day Jesus said if you follow me you will never live in darkness Jesus said if you follow Every day I'm gonna watch and pray Every day 
I'm gonna do everything that I heard Jesus say I'm gonna watch him play every day I'm gonna walk by faith and not by sight I'm gonna walk by faith and not by sight I'm gonna follow Jesus and do what's right I'm gonna walk by faith and not by sight Last time I'm gonna walk by faith and not by sight. I'm gonna walk by faith and not by sight. I'm gonna follow Jesus and do what's right. I'm gonna walk by faith and not by sight. Fantastic. Good singing. Well, any moment now, you're gonna see if you can learn the actions to it and you're gonna be humming that song all day. So, Thanks Rob Tab, fantastic, fantastic recommendation, great song to remind us to keep walking by faith. So get your cowboy kit on or your cowgirl kit on and go for it today, boys and girls, mums and dads, in fact. <laughs> Moving. Jesus was moving, moving through the city of Jerusalem, when he came upon a pool by the sheep gate, a pool called Bethesda. Moving. No one was moving there for the pool was surrounded by the blind who couldn't see to move, by the lame who couldn't get up to move, and the paralysed who couldn't move at all. Moving. But the water in the pool was moving, moving every now and then. Rumour had it that an angel of the Lord moved the water, stirring it from time to time with his heavenly hand, and the first one in the water would be healed. Moving. Moving. That was the key thing. Moving into the water first. So the blind would have helpers to lead them there. The lame would have helpers to lift them to their feet and the paralysed would have helpers to carry them. Moving. Jesus watched it all, but he found one man's plight particularly moving. I've been an invalid for 38 years, explained the man, but I have no one to help me into the water, so someone else gets there before me. Moving. Moving. Do you want to start moving? Jesus asked. Of course, replied the man. Then pick up your mat and walk.
moving. And while the others moved towards the water, the man simply picked up his mat and walked away. Now that was really moving. The story of the poorly man healed at Bethesda Pool. The man had been sick for 38 years. Can you imagine? And he knew all about the healing that happened at the pool. His problem was he couldn't get into the water. He just sat there watching and waiting. Watching and waiting. Watching and waiting. Yes, you get the idea. No one would help him. By the time he got enough strength up to move, someone else had got in the water before him. <sighs> Maybe he hadn't asked for help. We don't know. But we know he wasn't able to get into the water. And then Jesus turned up. Jesus saw him and said, get up, pick up your mat and walk. And the man had to do something about Jesus' words. He either had to say, nonsense, look at me. Look at what situation I'm in. I can't move. Or you have to choose the opposite and say, I believe you, I trust you, Jesus. And then get up himself, roll his mat up and walk like we saw in the video. For 38 years, that was a big miracle for him to choose to trust Jesus and then to get up himself and walk. And in our song today, we sang, I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. It's a choice we make to believe Jesus and to walk and to keep walking with him, believing in him, trusting in him, rather than the things around us, which might seem special, answers to all sorts of things, but the answer to life, the answer to hope, the answer to love itself is in Jesus. So let's forget the special things around us and let's concentrate, let's remember the special one, Jesus, our God, the one who calls us Father.
Hello, it's good to share with you today in this time of prayer. As Robin has been taking us through the New Testament letter of Paul to the Christians at Galatia, we're reminded of the need, both individually and collectively, to remain true to our faith. So we'll start our prayers today with a simple statement of Christian faith, which has been developed by the Diocese of Sydney in Australia. I invite you to join me as the words will be on the screen. We believe in God the Father, maker of all things. We believe in his Son, Jesus Christ, Lord and Saviour of the world. We believe in the Holy Spirit, giver of life and light. We belong to the Church, God's family everywhere. Amen. Today's reading from Galatians chapter 3 reminds me of the Getty Kendrick song, My worth is not in what I own. You might like to pray the words with me. My worth is not in what I own, nor in the strength of flesh and bone, but in the costly wounds of love at the cross. My worth is not in skill or name, in win or lose, in pride or shame, but in the blood of Christ that flowed at the cross. As we reflect on these two verses, we can joyfully continue with the refrain, I rejoice in my Redeemer, greatest treasure, wellspring of my soul. I will trust in him, no other. My soul is satisfied in him alone. Yes, my soul is satisfied in Christ, yet individually and collectively we let Christ down. We fail to live lives that are worthy of the love that he has shown to us. So let us make a prayer of confession. Almighty God, we confess that we have failed to demonstrate the full nature of the love which we share with you. We have done and thought things which hurt you and which mar the vision of your love seen by others. Also we have failed to do and to say things which would show your love to other people. We bring our confession to the foot of Christ's cross, humbly seeking the forgiveness which by your grace you offer us in Christ. Amen. As we thank God for his gift of forgiveness, we should be more determined to be faithful to him in our lives. Let us pray that we will be more open to the leadership of the Holy Spirit in seeking the well-being of other people and that we will do it joyfully. We don't do this alone. There are many non-Christians who have a strong humanitarian drive to care for and show compassion to other people. God not only offers love, he offers wisdom. So we pray that there will be an openness to his wisdom on behalf of all those at national and international level who have the power to make decisions to take us forward out of the present worldwide crisis. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our experience of your love and forgiveness. We thank you for every expression of love shown in the care and compassion of those in need. We pray that you will bless those who are putting others before themselves and by their actions demonstrating your love. We also pray for a blessing of your gift of wisdom to all who have to make difficult decisions to see us through this pandemic for scientists and engineers, for politicians and civil servants, that the decisions they make will lead us through the present crisis to a better world. We ask this in the name of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Galatians 3, verses 23 to 29. God's children through faith. Before the way of faith in Christ was available to us, we were placed under guard by the law. We were kept in protective custody, so to speak, until the way of faith was revealed. Let me put it another way. The law was our guardian until Christ came. It protected us until we could be made right with God through faith. And now that the way of faith has come, we no longer need the law as our guardian. 
for you are all children of God, through faith in Christ Jesus. And all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ, like putting on new clothes. There is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And now that you belong to Christ Jesus, you are the true children of Abraham. You are his heirs, and God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. Hello everyone, and a warm welcome to anyone joining us for the first time. Coronavirus has caused havoc in our lives, but it's also shown us all what is really important, people. Many are putting their lives on the line or seeking new ways to serve locally and nationally, showing through action the duty to love thy neighbour as thyself. Present circumstances are denying us our corporate worship, the joy of meeting together, singing together and worshipping together. We are having to learn how to worship God in new ways and how to love and serve one another in new ways also. Whilst we long to meet once again corporately, we know that God is not limited to a building or place, however special it may be. These present circumstances also are obviously impacting our other freedoms previously taken for granted. A new phrase has entered our common vocabulary. We are in lockdown. But hopefully we can say with the Corinthian Christians, we are hard pressed, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair. This morning's verses in Galatians deals with freedom from a type of lockdown. The newfound freedom believers can have anywhere and at any time through faith in Christ. So let's briefly look at some orientating context for Galatians chapter 3 verses 23 to 29. The author of Galatians was the Apostle Paul and he probably wrote it around AD 55 although it could be as early as AD 47 and he wrote the letter to Gentile believers in the region of Galatia. It was a heated discussion really between the Apostle Paul and Jewish Christian missionaries addressing the misunderstanding that Galatian non-Jewish Christians, otherwise known as Gentiles, had to follow Jew Jewish religious practices if they wished to be included in the people of God. Jewish Christian missionaries were questioning Paul's gospel and his apostleship. Apparently some of the Gentile Christians were on the verge of capitulating to these demands which then sparks a vigorous defence by Paul of the gospel message he brings and his calling. Freedom may seem an odd topic to discuss given our current situation. You may feel like a caged bird at the moment, but these short verses offer hope of freedom. But freedom from what exactly? Paul wrote the letter from a place of passion and deep frustration. Yes, Christianity began as a Jewish messianic movement, but its message was for all humanity, so it quickly spread from Jerusalem and Israel. Prior to this, the Jewish people had been set apart from the other nations and had followed religious observances as set out in the first five books of the Old Testament, others otherwise known as the Torah. The Torah contained the law. And the law was made up in three parts, consisting of the ceremonial law. This kind of law related specifically to Israel's worship. Its primary purpose was to point forward to the Jewish Messiah. Therefore, with the arrival of the Messiah, these laws would no longer be necessary. Whilst we are no longer bound by these laws, the principles behind them to worship and love a holy God still apply. And it was these ceremonial laws that some Jewish Christians accused the Gentile Christians of violating. Next came the civil law. This type of law dictated Israel's daily living. The principles behind the commands should guide the Galatians conduct and at times Paul asked the Gentile Christians to follow some of these laws, not because they had to, but to promote unity. And finally the moral law. 
This sort of law is the direct command of God, e.g. the Ten Commandments. It requires obedience and reveals the nature and will of God. It did apply to the Galatian Christians and still applies to us today. The Galatians and us are to obey the moral law, not to obtain salvation, but to live in ways pleasing to God. They have the added benefit that they protect our freedoms individually and as a society. So some of the Jewish converts to Christianity had arrived at Galatia and were promoting this idea that in order to become adopted into the family of God, new converts had to also take on and follow Jewish ceremonial practices and adhere to the whole Torah. In verses 23, 24 and 25 of chapter 3, Paul begins correcting this misunderstanding about which sections of the law to follow. Paul begins by explaining why the law was needed in the first place. He does not dismiss the law as being unnecessary and he doesn't criticise the value of the law, far from it. In verse 23, Paul says that the Jewish nation had been in custody under the law and describes the law as being a guardian in verse 24. Just as we need the law today to regulate behaviour in society and maintain order, and thank you to our local police, the Jewish nation had needed the law of the Old Testament to also regulate behaviour in individuals and maintain order in society. Surely following the law cannot be a bad thing, argued the Jewish converts. The law was from God and was good and wise. So what was the problem? Well, the problem was twofold. By the time of Paul, the law had become a burden. It had been interpreted and reinterpreted. It had been embellished by the rabbis, augmented almost beyond recognition, until its observances had become such an oppressive burden that it was imp impossible for anyone to meet its requirements. It had in fact become a yoke. Not only that, but it was being touted as a way to earn salvation also. Paul was deeply frustrated and he communicates this frustration in his opening address at the start of chapter 3, where Paul is very blunt with the Galatians. He says, You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish? After beginning by means of the Spirit, are you now trying to finish by means of the flesh? Paul is telling them you no longer need to be in lockdown to the law. Instead, you have freedom from, this, from certain aspects of this by believing in Christ and you receive salvation not through adherence to the law, but by faith in Christ and the outpouring of his spirit. He was warning them not to look upon strict obedience to the law as a means whereby they must try to obtain salvation for and by themselves. God had provided a way out, a plan of freedom embodied in the person of Jesus. Paul, after all, really knew what he was talking about. He would later say in Philippians when describing his former life, Though I myself have reasons for such confidence, if someone else thinks they have reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law, a Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church, as for righteousness based on the law, faultless. But after his conversion, he would go on to declare, but whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. Looking back from the vantage point of faith in Jesus Christ, both Jew and Gentile had to admit that the guardianship, and Paul says in custody, of the law had served a purpose. The purpose was positive and negative. The positive was that it guided people to protect them from poor behaviour towards one another and to protect themselves from destructive behaviours. And the negative was to show them that, because of man's rebellious nature, it was really impossible to keep the law in its entirety. This then prepared people for the wonderful gospel message of justification, that is, being made right with God by faith alone in Christ Jesus. 
So the Galatians had no need to be locked up anymore to the law, but could in fact be set free. In the closing verses of chapter 3, Paul then explains that this freedom imparts some privileges. It meant that Galatian Gentile believers, and in fact all believers, no longer have to be members of a specific group to be accepted into God's family. Anyone can be justified, made right with God, through faith in Jesus, not by what they can do for themselves, but by what God did for them. At the heart of the gospel message is this. When people trust in the Messiah Jesus, they are made right with God. Romans 10 verses 8 to 9 says this, but what does it say? The word is near you, it is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Paul, a Hebrew of Hebrews, says that you don't have to become Jewish, that's God's chosen people, to be saved. In fact, more than that, Anyone, free or slave, male or female, Jew or Gentile, could be accepted into God's family. We are not all the same. We have different skills and abilities. But Paul is saying that in God's sight, all are equal. Romans 10.12 says, The same Lord is Lord of all, and is rich to all that call on him. In the church today, we should do everything we can to remove hurtful distinctions and challenge exclusivity. All believers are, in a sense, one person or one body in Christ. Paul concludes with verse 29, which at first glance may seem an odd phrase. Paul is stressing that belonging to the seed of Abraham is not determined by physical descent, but by faith. In fact, the law was given 430 years after Abraham, so Abraham never really knew anything of the law. Romans 4.3 tells us that Abraham was in fact justified or made right with God by faith. Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. The lockdown to an extent has been a leveller. We are restricted in our movements around the world. But throughout the whole vast earth, the Lord recognises one and only one nation as his own, namely the nation of believers. God's purpose was always to have one large multi-ethnic family relating to him on the basis of faith, not on the observances of the law. The fundamental thing that God is asking from us is faith. We may still be in lockdown, but we will always remain free in Christ.
I've got a question for you following Paul's talk this morning. Are you part of God's family? I I don't mean are you part of church? Do you, when we used to meet uh, every Sunday in a building, did you used to come to either WEF or somewhere else? I mean, would you consider yourself to be one of God's children? and treat him as your heavenly father. Now it could be that the answer is yes, that you made that decision, that commitment many years ago, and you're still walking on that faith journey today. And that's brilliant. But it could be that your answer is, well, no, or I'm not sure. Or I'd really like to know a bit more before I decide. What I'd like to do this morning or whenever you're watching this, is to offer you an opportunity to respond to that. Maybe you do have questions. Maybe you're just not sure. And that's fine. And if that's the case, then we'd love to to give you an opportunity to have some of those questions answered and be able to talk things through with you. And if you'd like to get in touch with us via our website and leave your phone number, then someone will call you back if that's what you'd like. And and we can talk through any questions that you might have. But it might also be that you've heard or you've seen something this morning that stirred something inside you that makes you think, I want to be part of God's family. I want to start right now. Uh, I can't wait. And if that's the case, there's a very simple and very easy way that you can start this journey of faith, this spiritual walk with Jesus. And that's to pray a very simple prayer. Now it doesn't have to be word for word, but it it would be something like this. Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for the things that I've done that have separated me from God, the things that the Bible calls sin. Thank you that on the cross, you took the punishment that really should have been mine and that through your resurrection you opened up the way for me to get back into a full and right relationship with God the way it was always meant to be. I receive your forgiveness. I want from this day onwards to live my life following you I want to be known as someone who is part of the family of God. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me and for receiving me into your family. Now, if you've prayed that this morning or something like that, and again, you'd like to talk through what's next, where do I go from here, then please do get in touch with us. And we would love to talk with you, pray with you, point you to some uh, good books uh, and of course some really good parts of the Bible to start reading and to begin to grow in your faith as part of God's family. So wherever you are uh, and whenever you're watching, I really hope that today's service has been an encouragement and a comfort and a blessing to you and we pray God's blessing upon you and your family for this coming week. Amen.